Hey, today we are talking about U.S. military records for your genealogical research. Whenever possible, you want to try and collect military records for your ancestors because they may contain additional family history information that might help you piece together a great story for your family. Now, there are several places to go for military records, places like Ancestry, Fold3, uh, Family Search, and even the National Archives and Records Administration. Even My Heritage and Find My Past have U.S. military records, even though they're based outside the U.S. Now, U.S. Uh, military records are typically free almost everywhere. All right, now, let me introduce myself in case uh, we have not met before. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. There is a newsletter, a Facebook page, and a website. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. Now, there is a handout for this episode, and we'll talk more about that uh, toward the end of the show, but basically, you need to be at the information access level channel membership, or you can find them at genealogytv.org. All right, now what information do you need to find your military ancestors, okay? Well, it is best to have the full name of your ancestor and when and where he or she was born and when they enlisted. And it helps to know what conflict they were in if they were in a conflict, okay? And other information that might be helpful is a close family member to make sure that you have the right guy. Now, you need to know this. In 1973, there was a fire at the National Personnel Records Center and it destroyed many of our military records. So here's an excerpt from the uh, National Archives and Record Administration article that helps you understand why you might not find the ancestors that you seek, okay? So the National Archives reported that, quote, the estimated loss of Army personnel records for those discharged from November 1st, 1912 to January 1st, 1950 were about 80% destroyed. In addition, approximately 75% of the Air Force personnel records for those discharged between September 25th, 1947 and January 1st, 1964 were also destroyed in the catastrophe. However, in years following the fire, the National Personnel Records Center collected numerous series of records referred to as, as the auxiliary records, and they are used to help reconstruct the basic service information. All right, so now you've got some basic background information. Let's jump over to the computer and see what we can learn. Okay, we're gonna talk about military records and we're gonna start with Ancestry. Now, there are several places we're gonna look, but we're gonna start with Ancestry. And so here is one of the typical, easy to find military records. This is a World War II draft registration card. They're usually the common record that is found on Ancestry, as well as in a lot of places you can find these World War II draft registration cards. Now, anytime you find a military record, you want to take in all the juicy goodness. You want to note the serial number. You want to note his full name, everything about it. And if you'll notice here, we have a relationship. The person who will always know your address, Mrs. R. L. Miller, the relationship is that this person is his mother. So this is kind of a start. This is usually the first record people find. Now keep in mind that just because a person filled out a draft registration card does not mean they serve in the service, but here is a clue. Now let's move on to how to search some of that stuff. By the way, there are a ton of free records on Ancestry and there is a free collections search and I will leave a link in the description box on how to get to this. Here's in the handout a list of free records that are on Ancestry that are free to search. You do not have to have a membership. For those of you who have the handout you can have access to the ones that I have pulled out but if you scroll down from here you can see the full list of everything that is free to search on Ancestry. Now I went through this list and pulled out as many as I could uh, that I could find that had to do with military. So in the handout, the military list uh, will be there. The link to this free index will be in the description box below the video on the YouTube channel. Going over to Ancestry, let me show you how you can search military records. So you, it, it's pretty simple right here, right? You can click 
military records and search everything that they have in the world of military. Now, some of the results may be behind the paywall if you're not a member, but in many cases for military records, a lot of this stuff is available for free. You just have to have a free subscription to Ancestry if you want to search them for free. And you can also narrow by category. You can take a look at specific data sets and you can view all of them in the card catalog. Okay, so let's talk about Fold3. Now, Fold3 is owned by Ancestry, but it has a different subscription rate. Now, if you are an Ancestry member at the full all access pass, you have access to Fold3. So take a look at your membership. You may already have full access to this. If you do not, there is a subscription for Fold3 for some of these records here. Now, the cool part about Fold3 is that it has these nice little thumbnails for each of the different wars. So if we drill into, say, World War II, we could search right from here and hit search. We're searching the World War II collections for this particular ancestor. Now, as you can see, there are 73,000 results. So you're going to want to make sure that you have filtered this down. So I'm going to throw some filters in here. I'm going to say World War II. Well, it took me a little noodling over here with the filters. Uh, I had to take off a couple filters and put on a couple filters. And one of the things that was key for me was to take this filter box right here and I added another name. See, it says William A. Miller here. I added another name here to help narrow it down to just William A. Miller. And I also had sorted it by relevance, by the way. And when I finally got down here after searching through a couple of these guys, that were from the, I know his birth year was uh, 1917. And there he is. I find him in the Fold 3 records. And it says there's a memorial here. Now you can create a memorial page, although it doesn't look like anybody's really done anything here. But you can create a memorial page by adding and uploading stories and information and photographs. This is his information. I know this to be him. So there's a lot more information here than what is on that draft registration card. So now we're going to move on to the National Archives. And this is at archives.gov as opposed to archives.com, which is owned by Ancestry. That's a completely different uh, website. You want to go to archives.gov or you can even search for NARA for the National Archives and Records Administration. What you want to do is you want to click on this button right here, Veteran Service Records. And once you get here, you can scroll down a little bit. It says researching military records. What is available online? Well, when you click through to that, you're going to get this page. And what I do is I go straight over here to the era in which I am researching. In this case, let's go to World War II. When we get to World War II, we can then uh, take a look at what records are available online. Now, keep in mind, you're going to find more at either Family Search or on Ancestry, I think, than what you're going to find here. But remember, at uh, the National Archives, everything is free. So in this case, William A. Miller was a POW. So I'm going to take a look at this record set, which I've already preloaded over here. And so when I am here at this database, I can hit Search. And I have several options of records that I can choose from to search here. So we've got World War II Army enlistment records. We've got a variety of things that we can look at. Okay, because William Miller was a POW uh, in Germany, I'm going to take a look at this record right here. So let's click through and see what we find. So scrolling down, I can see that there are several records here, one of which is William A. Miller from North Carolina he was in Stalag 7A. I know this to be him. So in order to see that record, I want to click through this little icon over here. This gives me his service record. It gives me a lot of detail of what was going on. And uh, for me, most importantly, was that he was uh, held at Stalag 7A in Moosburg, Germany. It gives me some additional details. He was in France. And that is where he was captured. So that's kind of cool. That's that's a lot of really good information. We even have a serial number. And we could then write for more information if we wanted to seek additional records. We could do so through the personnel records office and see if we can find any more information. 
Okay, we're gonna jump over to Family Search and do some research for military records over here at Family Search. And the, the best way that I have found to do research for military records here is to go over to the search tab, drop down to records. And in this case, I'm gonna go search the United States. I'm gonna just pick the United States. Now I'm gonna type in my ancestor's name first. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in his birth place. And then I'm gonna come down here to type and I'm gonna restrict it to military records. Okay, then I'm gonna hit search. And look at that, number one is the right record. Now it might be because it's already in my tree, but this is a similar record to what you saw earlier, but family search is free. So there is an option there to get more information. You get his serial number again. You get a box number, where he's from. The event date is most likely his enlistment date. And this is from the set of United States World War II Army Enlistment Records, 1938 to 1946. So that is a quick way to search it on family search for military records. So if you were to write for military records, these might be some examples of some records that you might find. Here's an enlistment record gives a lot more detail. It even has his signature and a thumbprint, which is kind of cool. Here is a separation record. Here is a letter from the VA regarding um, burial expenses. So there's more to find if you apply for them. There is a fee to write for some of these records. You can do so by going to the National Archives page. Remember that's at archives.gov and click through to the military records page. And when you do, you get to this page and you can request service records online or by mail. There is a form you have to fill out. Um, and there's more information here. You know, what's available online, locating older records, pre-World War I military service records. There's a lot of really great information here at the National Archives even replacing lost metals. So make sure you're checking out archives.gov in order to drill down and actually apply for more service records than what is available online. Just one last note, at the time of this recording, we are still in the pandemic. And so they are on a limited staff here at the National Archive. It even makes a comment here about how they are limited on their workforce. So if you do apply, it may take a while for it, uh, your records to show up, but it may be worth the wait. Hey, I hope that was helpful. Look, make sure you check the uh, description box below the video on the YouTube channel so that you can see the link for the free record that are on Ancestry. And as a reminder, there is a handout for this episode for the Information Access Level channel members here on the YouTube channel. You can buy them individually at genealogytv.org. Now, if you are looking for the handouts, if you are an Information Access Level channel member and you are looking for the handouts, you want to go to the Community tab and make sure you are looking for, it'll say Early Release plus Handouts in big bold letters. Make sure you are looking for those there. And quite frankly, you can scroll through and collect all the handouts you want. Uh, so enjoy. And well, again, make sure you check them out over at genealogytv.org and thanks for your support. All right, there are more videos on the screen to help you with your genealogical research. So until next time, bye bye